Our news department has obtained audio of some of the euthanizations in question at the McCracken County Humane Society. We warn you, what you're about to hear is graphic and disturbing. You're about to hear the sound of Anderson using the heart stick on a dog that had not been sedated. He misses several times with the animal fighting both for his breath and his life. Now, eventually, the dog escapes from the McCracken County Humane Society and runs into the parking lot where a member of the public sees what's going on. Now, we're playing only a small clip of this audio here. Those who want to hear the 12 minutes of the audio before the animal finally succumbs can hear the sound cut on our website at westkentuckystar.com. It's even more graphic. The McCracken Humane Society receives taxpayer funding monthly from the McCracken Fiscal Court for taking and disposing of animals picked up by county animal control officers. We've been advised that may change temporarily or permanently, depending on public reaction to these charges and this developing story. A forensic clinical psychologist who deemed Michael Carneal fit to stand trial in 1998 testified today that would not have been his determination had Carneal been honest with him about the voices that were controlling his behavior. Dr. Dewey Cornell says after learning about the voices in 2004, he changed his assessment of Carneal to that of paranoid schizophrenia. Dr. Cornell said Carneal told him it was the voices of a group of powerful monsters he called the Danes, who threatened and harassed him, encouraging him to steal guns from a neighbor, take them to school, and fire into a crowd of students. But in 1998, Dr. Cornell said Carneal was not cooperating fully with the defense counsel or me for irrational reasons, because the Danes had warned him not to tell anyone of their existence. The hearing is expected to take all week, with Michael Carneal himself expected to testify. Reporting from the federal courthouse, I'm Donna Groves. David Barnett's son, Caleb, was high on mushrooms and thought he was in his own home in West Paducah when he broke into another home and was shot by the homeowner, Brad McKinney. David Barnett's warning to parents now is don't look the other way if you have any suspicions your kids are experimenting. I would tell them go to any links, any links to stop it, to stop it. Brad McKinney says his life also was dramatically altered by that young man's decision to take drugs that night. This is a story about what drugs can do to individual families, any family, doesn't matter where you come from, where you're going, how much money you have, this could happen to anybody. David Barnett says they both feel called to talk to others about what they've been through. If at the end of my life, I met my maker, and he said, you know what, all the talking you did, every every place you went, here's the result. This one person listened to you. Here he is, one. He didn't die because that's it. It's worth it. Anyone wanting Brad and David to come and talk to their school or youth group or gathering of parents can call Brad McKinney at 270-210-1626. Keith High School shooter Michael Carneal says he lives with the thought of the crime he committed every day, feels his sins are unpardonable, and has attempted suicide believing everyone would be better off if he were dead. Testifying at a competency hearing in U.S. District Court in Paducah today, Carneal said, quote, It hurts that I did this thing that hurt all these people. I wish I could take it back, but I don't know how, unquote. Carneal said the voices he was hearing that told him to fire on the prayer circle that morning in the school lobby in no way diminishes the responsibility he feels for the crime. As for why he didn't file an appeal of his conviction until 2004, Carneal said he couldn't have done it before then 
because prior to that, he was distrustful of everybody and didn't want to reveal what was going on inside his head. Reporting from U.S. District Court Building in downtown Paducah, I'm Donna Grove. When Jennifer Dodson heard the contest wanted to hear stories from people inspired by songs from CMA nominees, the speech therapist knew immediately that she had to write in about the effect of a Lady Annabellum song on a blind child named Gavin. She'd been using a list of songs to get him to select the one he wanted to hear. One day, though, he came in and he kept telling me, song for my mommy, song for my mommy. And I, I, he, I had no idea what he was talking about. And so I just started going through the, the playlist and he'd get mad. No, song for my mommy. And I finally came across um, Lady Annabellum, Someday You Will. And he just got excited and he said, song for my mommy. Dotson gets emotional when she considers the message that Gavin was trying to convey with the song. I don't know if you know the lyrics, um, but but it, it, it's down the road, the sun is shining, um, silver lining, just keep holding on. Um, and, and the lyrics just spoke completely that I knew that he, he, was, he was giving a message to his mom, too. <laughs> Sorry. To hold on, that things were going to get better. And I, I told his mom, and you know, she just had the same reaction. And, and it, it, was, it was very, very powerful. Dodson says now she wants to do something special for Gavin, and she's thinking that a gift card to iTunes might be just the thing.